Today's video tip of the day is on hand expand. Now I'm in my car for uh, for a reason. I actually leave a set of these in my car. Now uh, hand expand comes in uh, three resistance, different uh, resistances, if you will. Uh, the light blue is the lightest, I, so I suggest starting uh, here with the light blue. Uh, to get accustomed uh, to the actual movement and train your muscles and nervous system. Um, and then they have a, a medium blue, which is the medium resistance, just a little bit more than the light blue, and then a dark blue. So three different levels of resistance. Um, and I'll talk about mixing them up as well. But for the beginning, you just want to start, just start off with the blue, light blue. Uh, don't worry about your rep range or your, you want to do some high reps to uh, train your nervous system and these extensor muscles. So so now what am I doing? Well, this movement here. So this movement I'm doing with my hand is extension. Right, I'm extending uh, my fingers versus when I'm training my grip, I'm squeezing. So we do a lot of uh, flexion, uh, gripping movement, which is the flexion where we're grabbing a bar uh, or what, whatever uh, in the gym. Um, the problem here is that you, you create an imbalance in the uh, forearm muscles, which actually are the ones that open and close the fingers, as well as extend and, and flex the wrist. So uh, what you want to be doing, what's, what's critical, here with the hand expand is it's the only way one of the only ways you can use a rubber band as well but it doesn't stay on what's nice about the hand expand is it goes right on your fingers and stays on where it's supposed to and provides the proper resistance so um, now as I was saying the problem is that we create these muscle imbalances and for those of you who've been following uh, my training advice uh, for a while no i'm a firm believer in eliminating or at least minimizing those uh imbalances between opposing muscle groups uh and here we're talking about the extensors of the hand uh and the flexors which is going to flex open the hand extension flexion is closing the hand which is when you're gripping so um the problem is we, we create imbalances in these uh, opposing muscle groups so for example with lower traps and upper traps two different movements uh, i'm sure to suggest i'm sure to suggest that you guys train your lower traps as well as your upper traps to uh for not only better development and strength overall but for uh injury prevention because when you have these muscle imbalances it's easier to get injured and with the hand that's why we have so much forearm tendonitis are you getting pain when you're doing curls in your forearms or when you're doing pull downs or other gripping exercises the problem is likely due to an imbalance between your hand flexors and extensors and this is where hand expand uh comes in um same with the uh the, uh, tibialis anterior muscle on the on the shin this, this is the problem when your uh, calves are stronger, much stronger than the tibialis anterior, and then in that imbalance can actually increase your risk of injury, which is why you get those uh, shin splints. Same with uh, forearm tendonitis. It's one of the most common questions I get on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram. Jim, I'm getting pain in my forearms when I do curls. Jim, I'm getting pain when I do pull-downs and I grip the bar. Jim, I get pain when I'm doing curls, but only when I release the bar. Yes, this is called tendonitis. It's overuse due to those weaker muscle groups. Those weaker muscle groups. Now, the other problem with muscle imbalances is the fact that your body, your body will prevent further gains in muscle strength in that muscle group. So let's take the biceps and the triceps and just go for an extreme example, take someone who, let's just take someone who hasn't trained their triceps and only trains their biceps. Well, eventually those two opposing muscle groups will be such an, at an imbalance that the, the uh, body, the nervous system is going to prevent the biceps from growing any stronger or even bigger um, to some degree uh, because it doesn't want the imbalance to get too great. So it prevents 
the gains in one muscle group because the imbalance is so great. So if you want to increase your grip strength, you got to increase your extensor strength. And you need to be doing this to prevent tendonitis of the form. My history with hand expand, uh, it happened when uh, I suffered severe, severe, I mean, I couldn't even hold uh, my laptop. You know, I couldn't even like pinch grip, I couldn't even pinch grip my laptop when I was out. But the problem was um, I couldn't even, I couldn't even hold a glass of water. That's how bad it got. I, I, I literally had to uh, stop training uh, with my grip and used uh flex light grips which you guys see me writing about and, and doing videos on flex light because uh when i was having such issues with tendonitis in the forms and couldn't grip anything it was really helping me to still train although my training definitely did suffer so uh i tried hand expand uh at the um suggestion of a friend of mine who was a friend of of uh the owners and it it eliminated my tendonitis and I've been using it uh, as prevention and I have yet, this was going probably five years ago at least, uh, five years ago and I have not had a case of tendonitis since. It used to be a huge problem for me. Now using hand expand, uh, not only did it cure my tendonitis but it prevents it. And this is, I'll show you guys what I do. I, I keep it in my car. Uh, I try to do it at least three times a week, every other day, if I can. If you want to do it consecutively, you can. If you want to do it every day, it's fine as well. Don't worry about it. It's not going to overtrain your extensors. I leave it in my car, and then when I'm, you know, sitting in traffic or waiting to pick up one of my kids, I do a few sets. And, and this is basically, I'll show you my routine right now. Now, the hardest position is with the arms straight. So I just literally extend my arms straight out from my body, perpendicular from my body, straight out. And I do the hand expand, uh, open, hold it for a second, and then close it. Open and close. It looks more like this. And you can see how far I put these on, just on the fingertips. And so I'll typically go to just about muscle failure here. Uh, but the other thing you want to make sure to do is you also want to switch up your hand position. So pronated, which is basically palm down. Is one position but you might also find that you're much weaker with the supinated position which is palms up so what I'll typically do is I will do all my um, exercises with pronated grip palm down I do straight out to failure then I do it with my arm bent at 90 degrees And here I'll actually use a, a neutral grip. I will do a pronated grip for some, and then I will do a uh, supinated grip. So here I will do uh, some with a neutral grip. I will do some reps with a pronated grip, and then I will also do some with a supinated grip. Now, uh, after I do the, uh, so it's straight, so straight arm, uh, and mixing up and you can in, in the straight arm you can also do the uh, neutral grip uh, as well uh, if you want to do some reps that way but switch it up it doesn't matter how many reps you do you can do three in each position or or whatever one in in rotate hand position uh, or you can do all in one and just do three sets and do uh, three sets in each of the different hand positions going to muscle failure but then I finish with uh, my hand basically in the top of the curl position. And here again, I'll switch from, uh, typically I'll do it, the main position I'll use is the palm uh, up, facing up or towards me uh, on these, but I'll also do some with my hand uh, pronated, palm facing away as well, and then you can even do some uh, from the neutral uh, position. So now, after I do one round uh, with my right hand, uh, I will then switch uh, to my uh, left hand, and then I'll go back and forth, uh, typically doing, uh, I try to do at least two to three rounds of all three different positions, switching up my uh, hand position uh, as well. So that's uh, how I use hand expand. And 
you know, I have no uh, affiliation. Just want to make sure you guys realize I have zero affiliation with uh, Hand Expand. They've they've asked me to work with them uh, and offered uh, to to pay me, and uh, my answer is no. Um, true believer in these, so I'm promoting them for you guys because I I, I make zero dollars on uh, Hand Expand, but it's such a critical tool in my in my toolbox for training because I have issues with uh, tendonitis. And even if you don't have issues with tendonitis, you might just want to consider using hand expand to increase your grip strength and just for overall hand, uh, hand strength. Um, but also prevent prevention. You may not have it now, but as you get older, your likelihood of getting that uh, tendonitis in the forearm is going to increase. Prevention is really the key. This is why we call it prehab versus rehab. Using this exercise properly before the injury occurs versus waiting till the injury occurs. Then you have to take time off from the gym while you're rehabbing. No, prehab, guys. I do this typically, like I said, I try to do at least three times a week, uh, about every other day. Don't kill you. Don't, you know, everybody, whoa, can I... You know, I didn't. I did it on Monday, Wednesday, and then I forget. Can I do it on Saturday? Yes, it doesn't matter. Whatever three days you want to do, you want to do more, you want to do less, that's fine. Just trust me. Start using these. Start using these if you appreciate your grip strength and if you appreciate training and not having to miss uh, workouts due to uh, injuries. Hand expand, guys. Stay Jim Army strong.